he gets transported to a world where humans have gone extinct and becomes the most overpowered hero. Shin was an average high schooler who started playing the brand new VR MMORPG game called The Gate. This was the most advanced game of its time and took the world by storm. Players can explore the world as freely as they wanted to, select their own race and defeat powerful monsters together with their friends. This game was a dream come true for everyone but one day. This popular game became a death trap, as the servers were jammed and people got stuck inside with no way of leaving the game. When a monster killed someone, that player died in real life as well, which created a huge wave of panic. But Shin was an experienced gamer who protected his fellow players from untimely death and made it his goal to finish the game so they all could return back to their normal lives. After several months he finally leaves his home and his support characters to enter the final dungeon and face the final boss. The monster lunges forward with an attack, but Shin dodges and backs off before rushing forward and delivering a wild slash, cutting one of the wings off. He thought this would give him some advantage, but to his surprise the boss simply regenerates his wings back alongside his HP. He realizes that he needs to finish this fight as soon as possible, so he rushes forward and clashes against the enemy before jumping up and delivering hundreds of strikes in quick succession, almost defeating the monster. Before the monster could recover though, he uses his special ability to upgrade his sword and jumps up in the air, striking the monster straight on the head, finishing it off forever. As soon as the monster disappears, the announcement is made inside the game about how the final boss has been defeated which means that the game is officially over, and people are allowed to log off. He excitedly checks the log sheet to see that all of the players are slowly logging out and disappearing from the list. He makes sure that every single player left before finally he decides to log out. Before he could do that however, a sudden noise makes him turn around, and he notices that a new gate has been opened behind him. The curiosity gets the better of him, and he decides to check where it leads before logging out. Suddenly there was a huge bright light and the next moment when he opens his eyes, he finds himself in the middle of nowhere in a grass field. All of this feels very realistic, but he checks his menu to realize he still must be in the game. He tries to log out but notices that the log out button has disappeared once again. His heart sinks as he immediately checks the number of players in this game only to realize that none of the players from the previous game have been transported here, and he is all alone. He curses his luck, but realizes that he needs to man up and figure this problem out. First he uses his magic bird to take him to the location where his house used to be. To his utter surprise the house that he built was still there, but suddenly he notices that a bunch of hoodlums seem to be harassing a girl. They ask the girl to tell them where the elf is, but when she refuses to give them the information, they grab her and start taking her out into the forest. The moment she exits the barrier around the house though, a massive monstrous pig appears in front of them, scaring the hooligans away, while she collapses on the ground waiting for her death. Thankfully, Shin slays the beast just as it was about to attack her and asks whether she is okay. She thanks him for saving her and takes him inside where she asks what does he need. Shin is confused as this is supposed to be his home, but according to the girl, this home belongs to an elf named Rai. He suddenly realizes that Rai is none other than the pretty white-haired NPC character that he had in the last game. Apparently she is very famous and owns this establishment. The girl introduces herself as Tiara and claims that she can relay his message to Rai for a small fees of 1000 silver coins. Shin is confused as in the last game there were only gold coins so he produces a gold coin claiming that he only has this, but Tierra's jaw drops to the floor as apparently the gold coin is worth 10 million silver coins in this world. She asks who he is, and Shin replies that he belongs to the race of high humans. This shocks Tierra even more as high humans apparently went extinct 500 years ago. Shin realizes that the high humans must have been the players from his world who all logged out of the game after he defeated the final boss, which means that this world is 500 years in the future. He thanks her and hands her the gold coin for giving him this information. At first Tierra gets shocked and tells him that she can't take it, but soon the gold digger inside her comes out and she accepts the coin and simply stares at it with disbelief. He asks her about the monstrous pig in this area and she replies that she is cursed. According to her she used to have silver hair, just like any other elf, but one day when she was a child, she got cursed by someone and her hair became black. Ever since that day monsters have been attracted to her, and everyone hated her. 
Thankfully, Rai took her in and used a magical barrier to protect the house so that no monsters can attack them while inside. She claims that she will live her entire life inside the house, which is a pretty sad thing. So Shin uses his magic to check her stats and realizes that it is just a low-level curse that randomly happens. He tells her to relax and uses a purifying magic to nullify the curse. The magic seems to have worked, but her hair only partially changed to white. He decides to verify it and takes her outside the barrier, where she is scared at first, but soon gets relieved and overjoyed about the fact that now she can live her life normally. She starts crying and thanks him before they head back inside the house. There she hands him a blue envelope and tells him that this is a letter of introduction which will let him enter the city like a VIP. He thanks her and leaves the house to check out this new city and whether he can learn anything about how he can get back to his world. While near the gate, he realizes that he doesn't even have to get in line and enters the city without getting checked, and immediately heads for the adventurer's guild to register himself. While he was eating, the guild master approaches him and takes him into the back room to verify the blue envelope. He checks whether it is a fake only to realize that the envelope is totally genuine, and then he tells Shin that this envelope is extremely important as with this. He can travel through any city without checking, stay at any guild, and can even have a personal meeting with the king himself. He tells him to make sure the card doesn't get stolen, and he promises to keep it safe. He attacks the monster, but it blocks before striking back, while Shin jumps up before backing off. He realizes that this monster is stronger than he thought, and seems to have a legendary weapon. He rushes at the monster and strikes again, but barely does any damage because his sword is almost broken. He knows he only has one more chance before the sword breaks, so he powers up like Goku and rushes at the demon, delivering a powerful slash that deletes the monster while the sword is thrown away far into the sky. He feels bad because he wanted that sword especially now that his sword is broken, but simply takes the crystal is dropped as his reward and leaves the area for the time being. It turns out that the sword flew and ended up landing inside the chamber of the princess of this kingdom, who was beyond shocked to see this, while her guards wondered whether they were under attack. The princess tells them to calm down and realizes that the weapon is a legendary item, which is not a very usual thing to see. She tells the guards to get the weapon checked, and also find out who threw it inside the castle. Shin ends up returning to the city where he finds a large crowd gathered around the tattered remains of a bunch of soldiers. He asks around and finds out that the soldiers were wandering the northern forest after reports of people going missing so they went to check but ended up getting attacked by an incredibly strong monster that killed most of them while the rest ran away injured. The guard asks whether Shin knows anything about it, but he lies and claims that he doesn't know anything about it as he was picking herbs. After that he returns back to the adventurer's guild where he meets up with the receptionist named Silica. And even inside the guild he finds out that everyone is talking about the northern forests as apparently a lot of monsters have been spawning there lately. He turns towards her and reports that he ended up killing a giant monster called Skullface and wanted to have the gem that he dropped checked out. Silica is completely shocked while Shin continues about how the monster had a giant sword which ended up going missing, while his own sword ended up getting damaged during the scuffle. Silica gets in his face asking how can he talk so nonchalantly about something so crazy, but Shin replies that he just had a chance encounter, and it was not his goal to fight the beast. Just then a green-haired elf named Elsa arrives who asks what the commotion is about. Silica goes near Elsa and whispers in her ears about how Shin ended up killing the legendary monster Skullface. Shin tells them that he doesn't have anything to prove that he killed Skullface though, as the items he dropped were too weak and basic while the sword ended up getting lost. Elsa thinks that Shin must be lying about killing such a monster and asks Silica to get the gem checked. Silica tells Shin to wait out here while she has the gem checked, so he turns towards Elsa and asks whether monsters like Skullface spawn often here. She tells him that monsters are born from grudges and sins of people who die a horrible death, and because a lot of people ended up dying in the northern forest, it is now filled with corpses and a perfect location for the monsters to live. She tells him that usually the monsters there are pretty low level so Skullface being there is a very big mystery. Shin very calmly tells them that he thought so as well, because he has never seen a Skullface that's level 359. This utterly shocks the two girls as they wonder where Shin is joking around or not. Elsa immediately tells Silica to check the level on the gem and turns around to Shin, telling him that if he is telling the truth, then that means that he is stronger than a full party of a rank adventurers. 
He tells her to keep it a secret for now and she agrees and after that she heads of to eat some food. While waiting for his food, a tall man wearing weird purple dress walks in and everyone gets quiet around him, looking scared. The man comes up near Shin and puts his spear down, which Shin recognizes as a legendary item. The man sits down the other side and introduces himself as Will and asks whether he is new here. Shin replies that he came here a couple of days ago, and Will laughs about it, and claims that the only reason why Shin isn't scared of him is because he doesn't know him. He claims that he is known as the vampire around here because his spear has the ability to suck the soul out of any enemy that tries to cross his path. Shin doesn't really care about it and tells him to eat quietly as he has work to do. Later that evening he goes to a library to find out more about this world and reads a book only to learn that this world is basically the same as the game he used to play. But the race of high humans have gone extinct which means he is the last one in this world, which could be dangerous if bad people got to know about it. Meanwhile the guild master calls a meeting where they discuss about the recent developments with Shin as it turns out that he was telling the truth and the gem is indeed level 359. One of the royal guards asks the guild master to let him meet Shin, because this morning a huge sword flew into the princess's chamber and they believe that Shin is connected to this occurrence and the sword might belong to the monster Skullface. On the other end, Shin is sitting near a fountain eating some snacks when he spots a small beast girl looking at his food with hungry eyes so he offers her a bite and she happily takes it. While he was wondering whether the kid is lost, Will ends up walking up to them, as it turns out that Will takes care of some of the children that live in the church's orphanage and this girl keeps running away when she gets bored. He tells her to get back to the church, but before going she goes near Shin and whispers in his ears that he should save the fox in the northern forest. Shin has no idea what she is talking about, but decides to check it out. The next morning he heads over to Tiara's place, where he asks her to relay a message to Rai. He tells her that he has been trying to send a mail directly, but he can't do it. Tiara looks confused and asks what is he talking about, so he tells her that he has magic cards that he can directly send to the person he wants but they aren't working when he tries to send it to Rai. To demonstrate that the cards work otherwise, he goes outside the cottage and sends a mail to Tierra which shocks her, and she asks whether she could keep some. He happily gives her the cards and tells her to deliver the envelope to Rai alongside a sword that he produces. The sword supposedly belongs to Rai because in the game, he crafted it for her by using the items dropped by a lot of mythical monsters, and only she can use it. He tells Tierra to convey the message to her that if she remembers the sword and who made it, she should contact him. After that he heads off inside the forest to check what the beast girl was talking about and suddenly the fog thickens as he arrives near a shrouded temple. He enters inside the mysterious looking place and peeks inside the shrine only to see a small white fox lying in the middle of a magic circle. He walks up to her and checks the beast, only to find out that the fox has been cursed and poisoned. He immediately uses his ultra-strong purifying magic to heal her, and the fox returns back to consciousness. Suddenly he feels that something is off and checks his map to see that he is being surrounded by enemies. He goes outside to find a truckload of zombified skeletons walking with swords in their hands intent on killing him. He tells the fox to stay tight while he takes a spear out of his magical pocket and in just two extremely powerful magical strikes, ends the lives of all of the monsters. After destroying the entire group without even breaking a sweat, he checks his map once again, thinking that all is clear when he spots that there are two more monsters nearby. It turns out that the statues near the gate were petrified monsters who finally break free and attack him. They are both level 675, which is insanely high, but he dodges their attacks and tries to use his shadowbind magic to trap them. The monsters turn out to be pretty strong and release a thick fog like magical smoke, that completely covers the entire area, blinding Shin and hurting the fox, while the beasts attack Shin from the darkness as he tries to dodge. He keeps dodging their attacks while trying to think of a way out of this problem when the fox directs him towards the magical circle inside the shrine. He immediately runs inside, and to his surprise, the smoke clears up and he is able to see clearly. Before they could attack, he uses his special legendary binding magic and once they are trapped, he releases the full power of his spear, and in one devastating thrust, he completely destroys both the monsters from existence. Soon the smoke clears up, so he checks up on the fox once again, 
But to his utter surprise, the fox turns out to be level 211 monster called Elementale, which was the highest tier monster present inside the game. This was a really lucky break as he decides to keep the fox as his pet who could accompany him on his journey to find a way back home. He starts walking back but realizes that considering how rare and unbelievably strong this elemental fox can be, it could become problematic as some people might attack him and try to steal her away. To make sure it doesn't happen, he decides to form a bond with the fox in the process known as taming. After a beast has been tamed, only its owner can see the stats, and this way, everyone will think that she is just a normal fox. He turns towards the fox, and asks whether she would want to be tamed by him, and to his surprise, the fox seems willing to do so as she trusts him after he saved her life. He begins the process, and after a while, the fox gets successfully tamed. He names his new party member Yuzu, and heads back to the capital. He goes back to the guild where he meets up with the receptionists, who both want to take his report. He asks which one should he give the report to and the sisters start bickering. He doesn't care about these things so he walks over to the notice board, where he notices a weird quest. It seems to be have put up directly by the church, and it doesn't disclose anything, only asking for a skill-holding adventurer to approach them. He finds it very fishy, but at the same time, he is also curious about it. He decides to take the notice and head over to the church, as this way he could meet Millie as well. He reaches the church where he meets up with a nun named Trya. She asks what is he doing here, and he honestly replies that he doesn't really know much about the church, but came here after checking the quest. The nun immediately gets interested, and asks whether he is a skill holder. He tells her that he would reveal everything, but he would like to gather some information as well. He asks whether Millie the Beast Girl is around, and the nun seems suspicious, but takes him back to the guest room. He waits while wondering what powers does Millie possess as she told him to save the fox before. Finally the door opens and Millie enters the room, happy to see him. She immediately runs up to him and starts hugging him, which softens the nun a little bit as she claims that now she knows that he is not a bad person, because Millie usually doesn't like company. He asks whether he can start the business talk now, and the nun gives him her permissions. He immediately looks at Millie and asks whether this is the fox that she was telling him to save. Millie takes a look at his head and happily claims that it is indeed the fox that she thought was in danger and thanks him for saving it. Shin smiles and tells Yuzu to thank Millie as she is the one who asked him to save her life. Yuzu immediately comes down and thanks Millie while Shin turns towards the nun and asks about the quest. She tells him that he must be a skill holder to be able to see the quest which makes Shin realize that even though having certain skills were very common in his world, it must be a very rare thing in this new world. She tells him that they are looking for a particular skill holder who can teach one of the church's nuns that skill. He asks whether they want the heal or the curse skill, but the nun shakes her head and claims that due to certain circumstances, they really need to learn the purify skill. She looks down thinking that there is no way this guy knows the skill, but Shin simply replies that it is a hassle to learn that skill. She is shocked and asks whether he means that he knows the skill, and Shin replies that he does. She asks whether he would accept the quest, but he replies that he wants something in return for the job. She starts talking about gold and money, but he tells her that he is not interested in that and would like repayment in some other way. Just as the nun was going to break her vow of celibacy, Shin stops her and tells her that he simply wants to know details about the church, and about the powers the Millie possesses. She looks unsure about it, and it makes sense, but Shin knows way too less about this world, and having the church as his informant would be very helpful. The nun was having trouble making the decision, but Millie speaks up and tells Trya that it is fine, and that she can trust Shin. Trya ends up taking the advice of a six-year-old, and tells Shin that she can give him all the information about who comes and goes from the church alongside other details. She then tells him that Millie has the power of an oracle and can predict future sometimes. She has never been wrong in her predictions even once, and that's why they try to keep it a secret because some evil men can try to take her away, for their own benefit. To prevent that from happening, Will usually stays nearby, and because he is such a feared warrior, people stay away and don't mess with them. He then asks when would she like to learn the skill, but Trier replies that it is not her who is supposed to learn it but the granddaughter of the previous priest because of some religious reasons. Later that day, Shin tries to mingle with the other children, but they all seem to be enchanted by the beautiful fox, while they completely ignore Shin and Millie. 
Shin doesn't know how to get closer to the kids, but Millie has had enough and wanted to pet Yusu. So she calls him over to Shin, and then takes her in her arms, cuddling and petting the pretty beast. All the children watch in amazement and jealousy, but when Shin tries to talk to them, they run away. One of the older kids walk up to him, and asks whether he is the one who is going to help them. Shin replies that he did take the quest, and asks for more information about it. The little girl tells him that currently the church doesn't have a priest, so there are two candidates. The most promising candidate is a man who wants to destroy the orphanage completely and make his own house here. Shin asks why would he want to destroy the orphanage, and the kid replies that because they all hate this man, and he is also a money-grubbing pig. Shin asks why can't Trya become the priest, but the kid tells him that only a person with a purify skill can become a priest, and the other candidate is Rash, the late priest's granddaughter. She pleads with him to help them, and he tells them not to worry. Later that day he meets up with Rash who seems to be a nice girl but pretty clumsy and careless. He introduces himself and claims that he will teach her the purification magic but warns her that it will totally depend on how she practices and whether she is able to complete the training. He then asks whether they know any places where high-level monsters spawn, and Trier replies that there is a very well-known spot in the faraway forest. Before he can get any further information, the door opens and Will enters the door, with a scowl on his face, and asks why did he take the quest. He asks what he asks for in return and Shin honestly tells him about his deal with Trya. Will thinks that they are trusting him a bit too much as he is still a no-name new adventurer, but Millie insists that Shin is fine. Will still puts his lance on his throat and warns him that if any information about Millie's power get leaked, he will kill him with his own hands. Will then asks more about the purifying skill and how to learn it. So Shin explains that you first need to have a holy gem with you, which is very hard to find. After that you need to defeat over 200 undead monsters and each should be at least level 150. The good thing is that only the killing blow matters, so his plan is to weaken the monsters to the brink of death, so that Rash can easily kill them off. Even Will is shocked at this because level 150 monsters are no joke. Shin however reassures them that he can do this, and insists that the harder part would have been to find a holy gem, but thanks to the power of plot armor, he already has the gem, so they can begin the process immediately. They decide to start the quest at night, and all of them go back to have some rest. While Shin was walking down to have some food, he gets ambushed by Will, who was waiting for him, and he takes him into a tavern for a talk. They have a deep bro talk, while Will explains that according to myths, Every so often a person known as the Chosen One is born who has all the knowledge and memories from his previous life and is extremely strong. Shin wonders how this sounds similar to his reincarnation story, when suddenly he gets a message from Tierra who claims that Rai replied and told Shin that she wants to meet him the moment she comes back from her job. After that Shin takes out his letter of recommendation to flex on Will, but surprisingly even he has one. They touch tips together which strengthens their bond even more and a couple of hours later, head down to the dark forest. They walk for a while after which they finally find their first wave of monsters. The dog monster attacks them, but Shin immediately freezes them in the air, and tells Rash to use her heal magic to kill them. She was unsure at first but quickly deals with them. Will takes care of the next wave of skeletons with his lance and Rash destroys them as well. After killing a bunch of waves they finally head over to the deeper ends, where Will uses his adventurer's card to open a barrier which is put in place to stop new adventurers as this area is dangerous. They enter the area, and immediately Shin notices some monsters on his mini-map. Will goes ahead to deal with the ones ahead, while Shin weakens the ones nearby, and lets Rash end them. He tells her that by the time she learns to purify magic, she might become level 150 herself. Finally, Will comes back with a bunch of corpses and hands it over to Rash, who screams in horror at this sight. Meanwhile, much deeper in the forest, the princess and her party are dealing with a giant monster. She uses her giant sword to finish the demon and realizes that without this sword which came through her window, killing this monster would have been very difficult. She then tells one of her party members to help the other group, so she runs over to the nearby lake. The other party seems to be on their last leg, barely managing to survive against the giant monster. But the white-haired lady enters the fray and uses her ultra-fast strikes to slice the monster in pieces and breaks its core in half. She lands on the ground, and her hair starts flying as the knight realizes that it's the famous white-haired elf, Rai. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for part 4.
and make sure to check out this brand new anime about a weird loser who turns out to be the strongest fighter in high school.